video is a short video on how to use these following tools inside of Photoshop. Uh, neural filters for cleaning up portraits, the stamp tool, the patch tool, uh, the remove tool, which is one of the newer tools, as well as talking about the option menu and how to make sure that you are on all layers or sample all layers. Now, um, this video is made for a high school photography class and we are in Photoshop 2023. Um, since about 2021, they've added a lot of new features to Photoshop and so this video is pretty current to now, which is 2023. So given the fact that we are a high school photography class, uh, very frequently students are going through adolescence and they have um, blemishes on their faces and skin. Um, acne is a big deal for teenagers. So the one thing I want to teach along with these tools is how to clean up skin. I have a stock photo here of a young female with um, blemishes on her face, and I am going to help you clear them up. One of the purposes of this uh, practical application is if you ever asked to do portraits or senior photos or anything like that, you will have uh, these tools to clean up people's faces when needed. So we have the layer open. My Photoshop is set to Essentials and it's reset the workspaces. So everything is exactly how you should see it on your own. The first thing that we're going to do, um, which is a new tool in Photoshop in the last couple of years, is something called Neural Filters. So there are some filters under here, but Neural Filters, the one that you want, is right here. When we click on this, you're going to get a dra um, drop down menu on the right side. And in there, there are multiple, multiple different sorts of neural filters. Neural filter essentially uses artificial intelligence to do its job. Uh, some of these are really awesome. You could check out some others as you go throughout the course. But for now, we're going to look at the top one, which is skin smoothing. There will probably be a drop down arrow next to skin smoothing the first time that you do neural filters. You have to click it to download it, just like if I were going to download this makeup one right now. Um, I already have because I've been using it for a few years. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to go ahead and activate it in a moment. What you're going to do is you're going to download the filter. It will have a percentage show up on screen and tell you how much along it is. When it is downloaded, you will then activate it by clicking here. Um, depending on the speed of the com computer that you're on, depends on how long it takes. There was a uh, bar right here at the bottom. It was almost instantaneous um, on this computer and this Wi-Fi connection, which is great. But now it is activated on her face. It has to find a face. If there's no faces, it won't work. Uh, if somebody's turned sideways as a profile, it might not work either. So this is our first step. Now, blur and smoothness are the two tools inside of this. And so let's turn up the blur. Let's turn it to about 75 and see what it does. Okay, just the blur. And right down here, you can turn off and on your tool. Wow, look at that. That's not bad. It got a lot of the little stuff. Let's try smoothness to see what it does. Let's take our smoothness to, let's just say, plus 25. So that's a nice smoothness. It does make the face look a little plasticky, especially up above the uh, forehead on the near the hairline. Um, I'll explain later how we can clean that up and make it look awesome. So over here for output, you have options, okay? Um, for you, for this, I'm gonna tell you a new layer. Now there are pros and cons for each of these, but for this demo, new layer. Do not pick current layer. That's not gonna be good for you. Please pick new layer. Press OK. And neural filters will close. You will have a new layer. If you turn it off and on, you will see the difference, the before and after. Now, there are some uh, larger blemishes uh, above and below the lips, on the chin, in the forehead, along the hairline, etc., that we want to really take a look at, really kind of clean up and make it look awesome. So, as I've said to you before, uh, stamp, patch, and the remove tool we're going to be using 
um, right now, okay? So let's take a look at those. There's also one other tool we might be looking at is a spot healing brush. It's right here. So these tools um, are found under here, all but the stamp tool. So you have spot healing brush, the remove tool. There is a healing brush under here. This video doesn't cover it and the patch tool. So let's talk about a couple of the different tools here. So if we start the patch tool, go back over here and the patch tool needs to sample from the actual image. So if you're down here and you have to be on that same layer, look at that, you're on the layer. And what you're going to do is you're going to drag this blemish over to an area where there's clean skin. Make sure you keep it nearby so um, you can still have the same lighting and the same color of the skin, the same tones. And so the patch tool is pretty good. It's pretty, pretty robust. I'm not going to do the patch tool on every single blemish. A little bit of mascara maybe we can get rid of. Um, just so I can show you all of the tools that are in the arsenal here. So that's patch tool. You literally you will select the area that you want to patch and you drag it over to some clean, clear skin close by. If you do this far away, eh, you're going to get some weird looking things. Okay, so the next tool, and once again, you go over here, the shortcut's J, and then I'm holding the mouse down. And so once I do, um, I have the remove tool. Let's go ahead and try the remove tool next. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. Command plus and minus, or the Z key. So this remove tool is one of the newest tools in Photoshop 2022. And so what it does is it looks for the information of the data around the area. And uh, when you're doing this, guys, for the, for the remove tool, I need you to make sure in the option menu up here that sample all layers is turned on. If it does not, it may not work. Okay, that's one of the biggest problems that people have had is right up here in the option menu. So let's go ahead and just paint over some of these edges, these on edge, um, this blemishes over here in her uh, temple area and the side of her forehead. Okay, again, I'm just kind of going through it. Now, one thing, guys, if you get too big on this and you're like, I think I'm just going to do the full forehead. Yeah, go for it. Um, wow, that looks weird. She looks like a little plasticky person. Don't do that because you're losing all of the highlights in the skin. You're losing all the texture in the skin. You're going to lose some texture with this process, but I'll show you at the end how to bring it back. So again, we're in the remove tool and J is the shortcut. Okay, so we have some options here that we could take a look at. Um, this tool you have to be in the background layer to use. That is a an issue with the tool. That's why I always have a copy underneath. Is when you're in the background layer using it, like on the actual photo right here, right? Um, if you screw up, it's hard to step backwards. And sometimes I'll throw a mask on it just to make it a little bit easier. This picture isn't the highest resolution picture, but I thought it was pretty fair for what we're doing this week. Some more over here. I guess I could try and see what it does. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, uh, next tool. Um, the next tool that we're going to talk about today, if we go back over here, okay, is the um, spot healing brush, which I forgot to write on here. So whatever. It's at the top here. Now, spot healing brush is an amazing tool. Um, you can use it in two different ways. You can use it on the background layer. I don't like to do that because I like to have more control. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command Shift N or I'm going to hit the plus sign right here and make a blank layer. Now, every professional photographer and Adobe Photoshop user will tell you you should name your layer. So I'm just going to call it skin. Now, I am in the spot healing brush and everything up here looks good. Right here, though, you have to make sure it says sample all layers. If you don't do that and you start painting, it's not going to do anything because it's doing it all in a blank layer. Sample layer. You start painting. 
Guess what? It starts removing stuff. Here's the problem with this tool. If you look here, it made it kind of plastic. Let me step back. So it kind of made it a little bit plasticky, right? Right there. So try to use this as small as possible. Um, I do this frequently, and I'm using the, the hand tool to move my face around. When you're in any tool and you hold down the space bar, it automatically changes to the hand tool. So you can kind of see some of these little bumps that are caught by the reflection of the light. So well, we still have some of the mascara. It's okay. Um, over here, maybe a little bit larger. That looked a little weird to you. Um, so I'm going to go through and get rid of some of this. And I have this big red thing here. I'll come back to that. So should we try this? I think it's going to, I think it's not going to look good. Well, let's try it and see what it does. Ew. Look, let me zoom out and show you. See how ugly that is now? So we're going to not use this tool for that. I just hit Command Z to step back one. Like if it doesn't work, it just hit Command Z real quick and it will go back to where you just were. Um, so pretty good, looking pretty good. A couple spots here and there. Um, I told you that spot's kind of big. Let's go here, here. Guys, you have to, number one, you have to turn your brightness up on your monitor when working in Photoshop. Uh, number two, you have to be okay and comfortable zooming in. I really don't care if the acne is gross. I mean, we've all gone through it, most of us at least. I used to have horrible acne when I was 12 to about 15. It was just ridiculous. So um, next tool, we're going to go over here, 2S for stamp tool. The stamp tool is, I think, one of the more powerful of these tools today. And if you uh, did the advanced track recently, we used the stamp tool in there. Um, so let me explain this one to you because there's going to be some things you're going to see. Let's go down here to this blemish right here. We are in the stamp tool. Now, if you're in the stamp tool, you're going to start seeing like weird like things. You're going to be like, why is it showing me weird things? Okay, let me explain the tool to you. The stamp tool allows you to take an area of the picture and uh, copy it over another area of the picture. So let's start on the menu bar at the top. First thing, hardness, turn it down. If it is at 100, you will not do well with this. So I'm going to put mine maybe at 20%, something nice and low. Next, make sure for now my opacity and flow are at 100. We will modify these. And then right here, sample. Yours might say current layer. If you start sampling current layer, nothing's going to happen. You can't do anything. Nothing's happening. You have to say all layers. You could say current and below. Um, it will just give you the layer you're on and the one right below it. I always do all layers. I find it works exactly the same for this class. So now, <clears throat> here's the deal. I am going to make my brush just about a little tiny bit bigger than the blemish. And that's what I've done here. And I'm going to grab some skin next to the blemish. See the skin here that has texture in it that I'm kind of mouse overing? That skin right there. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Take your non-dominant hand, in this case my left hand. I'm going to push down, press down the Alt Option button. While I have it down, I'm going to click on the clean skin near the blemish, which I just did with my mouse. I'm going to lift my hand off the Alt Option button. And then I'm going to start painting over the blemish. Now, wherever the plus sign appears, that's where it is painting from. That is your uh, originating area. So if I start going like this all over the place, I'm like, whoa, oh, wow. And I keep my mouse down. That's what she's going to look like. That's not good. <laughs> so lift up, come back over here. Now we got the blemish stamp tool. So I'm going to grab some skin nearby. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna, I'm resampling. I'm resampling all the time here. So I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger. Okay. Uh, and then let's zoom out. Look. Okay. It doesn't look horrible. It looks a little like, like right here. You can see some like weird stuff. So here's how you fix that. Maybe take your flow. 
turn it down to half. Click nearby and just kind of mount. Oops. Can I go over a little bit? Okay. Over here. Just over a little bit. Okay. So that looks a little bit better. See? Okay. Now let's move on. Let's try it again. Another spot up here. Hair. Right here on the forehead below the hair. So I'm holding down the Alt button. I'm clicking right there where that little target sign shows up. Then I'm going to click right there. There's a couple times. Tap, tap, tap. It goes over it. Click there. Lift my non dominant finger. Paint. Guys, you have to keep resampling because if you don't, you're going to get something like where you're like, oh, I'm going to sample right here. There's a spot. Okay, I'm going to be like there. Oh, and then, oh, I want to come over here and do it here too. Wait, why does she have now? Why are we moving eyelids around? Right? Like, look at her. She's <laughs> that's funny. So we'll put her eye back. Uh, so let's see. Oh, I was going to do this spot down here, I said, remember? So let's do that. Uh, turn the flow down a little bit. And let's see, we're going to paint. But that's kind of bright. Let me zoom out. That's a little bit bright. So what can I do? Well, I could turn my opacity down to like half, maybe around half. Let's zoom into there. I'm going to use this clean skin over here and I'm just going to paint. So you can see it, it's still the same skin, but it's a little softer. Okay. Now up here, right here, same skin, a little softer. I think I'm going to increase this, the opacity here to about 80. Okay, that looks a little bit better. A little here. Now, watch this, guys, right over here. If you're on an edge and you start painting, so it can get really funky real quick, so be careful. I'm just command z right now. So just be careful with that. Um, the smaller stuff I told you I'd probably use spot heal on some of the smaller areas, okay, or the remove tool. But on bigger areas, I'm more of a stamp tool guy. Let's look out at this, because for sake of the um, demonstration, I'm not going to do the whole, whole thing. But this is, the flow is about 50, the opacity is about 80. It's kind of painting over, like, where the blemishes are. Okay, just making sure that it looks right. Now, you can use a bigger brush. You could turn down your opacity here, or turn it down to 40 right now. Just make sure that you're still nearby where you were. Uh, remember, using this, this tool with the opacity and the flow and everything is like, um, is like putting on makeup. Now, this ch chin looks a little weird. I don't know if I love that, but I'm going to show you how I'm fixing it in a minute. So let's just do a little bit more, maybe above the eyebrow. Just make sure that you're sampling nearby the area that needs to be fixed. Okay? Because if you're not, it's going to look weird. Okay, so I'll just do that a little bit. Uh, how do you wear shinies? Shinies, well, some people hate shinies. They make them look all sweaty. So if we have like a low flow and a low opacity, and you kind of go over a little bit, with a nearby skin where the shinies are not, it does change the way it looks. So let's do the nose a little. Okay. And if you turn it off and on, you can see it, kind of see it. So it doesn't look perfect. This is just a demo. Uh, once you feel like it looks pretty good, but it looks a little plasticky, I got one more step for you. Okay, check this out. Okay, so you're going to um Create a layer where you take everything that you've done so far and you're going to stamp it all together and you're going to put a copy of it over in the layers panel. I don't know how <laughs> to do this. Um, hmm. Let me see if I can figure it out. Now, I'll just tell you the shortcut because I know the shortcut. The shortcut is command option is command option shift E. Command, Shift, Option, E. Let me do it again. Look over at the layer panel. Command, Shift, Option, and then press E. What it does is it takes a blank layer. Um, and it, fill, it just essentially takes a picture of everything on the screen. 
uh, the con of this is you can't edit anything below again. Unless, of course, you turn that off. And I don't want to turn this off. Uh, so I'm going to show you real quickly. So Command Shift Option E. It's called a stamp visible layer. I don't know where it is in the menu because I've never used it in the menu. And then we're going to go up here to filter again and go to camera raw filter. This you've seen before. You've been in here. This is the same thing as bridge. Now, remember, it looks just like this. So let's hop down here to the bottom to something called effects. Effects has vignetting, which we'll talk about later in the year, but vignetting is putting this like dark or light area over around it, and it's kind of faux pas. But what I'm looking for here is the one above it called grain. Now, if I turn the grain all the way up, it adds a lot of tiny little colored speckles all over the picture that doesn't look good. So let's pull it back down. Eyeball it, guys. I'm about 20 here. I think 20 looks pretty good where it kind of smoothed out the skin, made a little less plasticky, looks kind of like pores, looks like texture of skin. Press OK. Don't save here. Okay. So you can kind of see the difference right there. Okay. So um, you can see before and after. Different options right here. But when you're done, hit OK. So let's turn it off and on. It's really subtle, guys. Let's go to that, check out that chin, right? Okay, chin looks a little better. Here's it without it. Okay, here's it with. So it adds a little bit of texture. It adds a little bit of like um, almost sharpening to the picture. And I think it doesn't look bad. So let's go to the beginning, the original, and the end. Original, end. That didn't take too long. So this is the assignment for this week. If you have questions, let me know. If you're watching this on YouTube and have questions, do feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Thanks, everyone.